Good evening, lovely listeners, and welcome back to Raven Reads. I'm Raven, and tonight, because it is Friday the 13th, I thought it would be fun to delve into some camping horror stories in honor, of course, of Camp Crystal Lake. Also, being that it's Friday the 13th, I'd like to remind you that the brand new Camp Crystal Lake Class of 80 enamel pin is up in the shop and it, along with all of the other enamel pins, are currently on sale for 60% off. The code is SUMMER60 if you want to get in on that and the link will be down below in the video description and in the information card to your top right. Hopefully you guys are ready to go camping and hear some truly terrifying tales. Without further ado, be sure to subscribe if you want to hear more of these stories. And if you want to be notified every time we journey into the dark, be sure to ring the notification bell. With that out of the way, you know what time it is. It's time to grab your gear, get comfortable, get a beverage of choice, and get ready to take another journey into the night. From 1993 to 1998, every summer I attended a Christian youth camp for girls. Camp lasted four days and three nights. There were about 200 girls at the camp, and it was about a one and a half to two hour drive away from our homes. Some of the camping areas were tent only. Others had A-frames, and at least one of the camping areas had longhouses. The campground is called Ensign Ranch in Kittitas County, Washington. You can look online to see pictures of what these different camping areas look like. It's a really safe campground, and we had a lot of fun every year. In the evenings, we would tell spooky stories, pretty typical stuff for youth camps. On the last night of camp in 1996, I was 15 at the time, there were several of us girls on the top level of our longhouse. It was past bedtime, so we were quietly telling scary stories. I had told a couple, one with the help of a friend I'll call Lily. I don't remember the specific stories from that night, just typical and the hook was hanging from the car door kind of stuff. After a couple of hours of spooky stories, someone else was talking and I was getting really tired and could hardly keep my eyes open. Then some of the girls asked me to tell one more story. So I start telling a story, making it up as I go, just typical on a dark night in the woods not far from here type of beginning. Next thing I know, I wake up lying flat on my back. As I'm waking, I realize that I'm still talking. But once I became aware of my own talking, I couldn't remember what I was saying or trying to say. I was fully awake then. I finished by lamely saying something like, they all died, the end. I looked around me at the girls who were all staring wide-eyed at me. A couple of the girls were quietly crying, mouths open in horror with tears streaming down their faces. My friend Lily whispered, that was the creepiest thing I've ever heard. The girls that weren't crying nodded in agreement. I said I was tired and that we should all go to bed. As all of the other girls moved away to their sleeping bags, I asked Lily and another girl, who I'll call Sarah, what I had said. I admitted to them that I had fallen asleep and I couldn't remember anything. Lily and Sarah exchanged glances, and Lily paused before saying, that just makes it worse. Sarah nodded in agreement and said that she didn't want to retell it because it was that creepy. Now, at this point, if it had just been Lily and one or two of the other girls that were in that group, I would have thought that they realized I was asleep and were just messing with me. But Sarah was, and still is, a very serious person who doesn't have much of a sense of humor, doesn't like pranks, even innocent ones, and is honest almost to a fault. So I went to sleep feeling unnerved but exhausted. A few hours later, I was being shaken awake by one of the adult camp leaders. She told me to gather my things and follow her. I sleepily and awkwardly carried my stuff down the ladder, then followed her outside. 
two other camp leaders were standing next to a tent. They told me to put my items inside and then to come talk to them. Inside the tent were two of the younger girls, 12 or 13, that had been listening to the scary stories and who had been crying when I woke up. They wouldn't even look at me. They just laid there, sobbing. When I went back outside to talk to the leaders, they said that Lily had shown up at their tent with two of the sobbing girls. The girls were crying and kept saying they wanted their parents to come get them. Lily explained about the scary stories and about mine being the one that made them cry. The leaders asked me what I had said. I admitted that I had fallen asleep and honestly didn't know. The leader said that Lily refused to tell them what I said, and the two girls sobbed harder the more they tried to talk to them. They explained to the girls that they weren't going to call and wake their parents up at 3 a.m. and have them drive over an hour just because of spooky stories. Plus, we were all going home the next day. As punishment for scaring the girls, the leaders made me sleep in the tent with them while the leaders went to sleep in the longhouse. The girls cried for a bit and then we fell asleep. They were both gone from the tent when I awoke in the morning. To this day, I have no idea what story I told. Nobody that was there has ever been willing to tell me any of the details. Several years afterward, Lily told me that she would randomly still have nightmares because of it. The only details I ever had answered were that my voice sounded the same as usual my eyes remained closed for the majority of the story, which creeped them out even more, and that the story was coherent and made sense up until the end when I lamely finished it off. Again, if it had only been Lily and a few other less serious girls, I would know that they were just screwing with me. But for Sarah and most of the other girls that were there, including the one that cried most of the night, being part of a prank on me just doesn't seem probable. I will likely never know the story that I told, and maybe it's for the best. So last weekend, I went camping at Brownwood State Park in Texas. I had to shower that night, so I made my way to the camp showers. They were incredibly loud, but it wasn't a big deal. I showered like normal and had the shower off to dry off and leave. I heard a loud knocking on the door suddenly. It was perfectly rhythmic. One knock, two second pause. One knock, two second pause. For about ten knocks. I finally shouted, Occupied! It stopped for a beat, and then continued. I shouted, I'll be out soon. Assuming it was my boyfriend, I just let it go. A few knocks later, it finally stopped. Then I heard my boyfriend come to the door, knock softly, and ask, Sweetie, you almost done? I had immediately assumed that it was my boyfriend messing with me, but I noticed later, I never heard whatever was knocking come or go and I could hear my boyfriend walk up to the door from a distance. I had been accusing him of messing with me, but he's very no-nonsense and seemed as scared as I was. He had a flashlight and said that he didn't see anybody leaving. At the time the knocking stopped, there was about a 45 second gap from the knocking stopping and him walking up. It was really weird. I didn't shower at night after that, but I'm really glad I didn't open the door to whatever was knocking. Anyone had something weird happen like this while camping? So when I was about 13 or 14, I went camping with my father, my uncle, and my cousin. It was in a faraway place from home, and it was near a small fall that turned into a little river. Note that this was in Brazil, so we were camping in the deep depths of the rainforest. Very dark. After we had dinner, we put down the fire and went to sleep. It was my first time camping, so I was uncomfortable with all the forest noises and everything. After a good 30 or 40 minutes of trying to get to sleep, 
I realized that I wasn't hearing any noises anymore. It was completely silent, and my dad and relatives were sleeping. I was frightened because of the silence, so I stepped outside the tent to take a look outside with my flashlight, and then something kind of reflected the light. I was so scared that I went inside the tent again to find my dad and my relatives all wake up and ask if I saw something. I said that something reflected the light, and everyone stepped outside to see. When everybody was outside, we saw three gigantic figures, about seven feet high, fully covered in white clothes, gloves, and boots, and their faces were covered with something that looked like black nets. They had very long arms to the point of almost reaching the ground, and had a strange blue aura all over them that looked like fog. They made weird sounds as they were speaking with each other, at least I assume that's what they were doing, and then proceeded to just walk into the woods again. Everybody was so afraid that we just packed up and left that same night. I remember this like it was yesterday, and even now I am afraid to go camping again. I never want to have the possibility of encountering those things again. Also, I'm 25 years old now, so no, it wasn't drones. My wife and I were camping last night in Blue River Reservoir in Oregon. We camp here often and decided to explore up FSR 520. FSR means Forest Service Road for those who don't know. We found a cool abandoned bridge far back in the woods over Cook Creek. The spot was beautiful and we were set up over the river on this long abandoned bridge over the creek. If you've ever been into the Oregon woods, you know that they can give off a creepy vibe, and this was no exception, but it really was a dream campsite. Being 40 feet directly over a river while on a bridge with limbs growing everywhere all over it isn't your everyday spot. I'll throw in for background that there was nobody within at least three miles of us. We had to hike in a little from our car, approximately a tenth of a mile. We explored around the area for quite a while and didn't come across anything out of the ordinary besides a pair of shoes and a name, Mona, written in ash on a rock of the fire ring. While we were sitting by the fire, I noticed a very bright flash of light over the river, and I snapped my head up, but didn't see anything. A few moments later, I was paying closer attention, and I watched a ball of light float, even with the bridge 40 feet in the air from one side to the other in the woods, over 50 feet. The light was very blue. My thought the first time had been that somehow headlights had come through, but I would have heard a car, and no man-made light could get to us in this isolated area. This blue light was unlike anything I've ever seen. I mentioned it to my wife, but I didn't want to freak her out, so I dropped the subject soon after. Later that night, in the tent, we had the mesh lining up where we could see outside. My wife gasped and watched as the same blue light floated at the end of the bridge 30 feet away and hovered in the air. After a good bit of time, it shot into the woods. It being late at night, we were obviously scared of somebody's headlamp, but it shot away 40 times as fast as any human could go, and there was nothing attached to it. Our dog left the tent and stared at the spot for the next 10 minutes while peeking down the side of the bridge very seriously. Has anybody else had a similar experience on Forest Service Road 520 in Blue River Reservoir in Oregon? Or maybe in the Pacific Northwest at all? I'd be very curious to know. My parents forced me into a church camping trip. I wasn't from any church, and I didn't really want to be friends with the people there. My female cousin went too, so we had nice conversations. The place was okay, but around it was a lake, and a bridge to the forest on the other side of the lake. 
There was this weird air in the areas around the camping place that we were. I remember exploring it, and there was a very bad energy there. Ripped clothes, campfires that looked old, black trash bags hanged into trees. All that in the forest around the camping area as well. I suppose it was kind of normal, but it just gave off a bad vibe. On one of the last nights there, they finally lighted a campfire for people to come around. My cousin and I were talking for a moment, and then we remained quiet for five minutes or so. I looked far away into the forest, to that little lake that was splitting off from there. I suddenly saw a man running around the lake in the forest area. He was wearing big, white, Jesus kind of clothes and no shoes. He ran fast, and while I watched him, I felt this really bad energy. I looked at my cousin, and then she looked at me. We were both pretty spooked. I asked her if she saw something there, and she described exactly what I saw. We got this really creepy feeling from it, but nobody from the church would believe us. Even today, I remember clearly that the man, if that's what he was, looked tall, white robes, very pale, running on completely bare feet, giving off this really bad vibe. He looked human, but it was almost like he wasn't. I know it's not as much of an impressive story as others, but it was one of the realest things I've ever experienced, and I really don't think that guy was a human. The man disappeared within seconds after me spotting him and looking away, and we never saw him again after that. There was nowhere for him to go. I still can't explain it. This story happened in my childhood, when I was about 12 years old. I thought about it ever since, and I still don't know what it actually was, or what I should think of it. It's not the most spectacular story, but it was creepy to me. I grew up in an apartment that was pretty much outside the city and close to a forest, so we had a lot of green around where we were, always playing in it and sometimes going camping outside with friends in the summer. So, one night a couple of friends and I decided to build up my tent and sleep outside. We were always staying up for a really long time and telling each other ghost stories. While we did this, we suddenly heard noises from outside the tent. We all held our breath. Then, we could hear steps. They came closer and closer. And then the steps even went around our tent. And then they stopped. We got really scared, and we started saying things like, Whoever you are, go away, or we'll call the police. It seemed to work because the steps continued and headed away from our tent. After a minute or so, we then tried to be brave and went outside the tent to see who had come. But the only thing we could see was a woman in a really long dress, walking away in the dark. I still don't know who or what that was, but she had no business being out there. It still gives me chills to this day. This happened to me a while back when I decided to go on another camping trip alone. I always liked camping alone. There's something serene and sobering about being isolated in the middle of the wilderness, and I always found it relaxing. So I planned out what trail I was going to take, packed my camping gear and my rifle for protection, and jumped in my truck. I get to this trail early in the morning and hike about 15 to 20 miles in until I find the right spot, and I head off the trail to find a place to put my tent up. I stumble upon this nice-sized clearing and decide that it's a nice, beautiful spot to settle down. I'm exhausted at this point, but I set up the tent at the southernmost edge of the clearing next to the tree line, and I manage to get a fire going. I roast some hot dogs, and I start to hear a sound in the distance underneath all the forest noise. It sounded like an animal, 
most likely a deer, with a lame leg, as it sounded like the animal was making a walking and dragging noise. I felt bad for the poor guy, but it was too far away, and it was getting dark, so I couldn't really go find it to put it out of its misery. Thinking nothing of it, I go to bed after eating my food, douse the fire, and crawl into my tent and insert myself into my sleeping bag. I decided that even at my exhausted and relaxed state, I couldn't quite go to sleep. So I pulled out a book that I brought with me and started to read by the light of my lamp. Hours go by, and I hear that sound again, this time closer, right at the opposite side of the clearing. Surprised, I put my book down, and I listen to this animal walk-drag across the clearing toward my tent. It's really loud at this point, and it now sounds like the hooves are all being heavily planted with the dragging noise following seconds after. It's almost like the deer is dragging something along. It makes it to about what I assume is the middle of the clearing, and stops. I hear nothing. No breathing, I mean not a sound from this animal. I unzip the tent and look into the clearing. Nothing but trees and darkness. What the hell? Unnerved at this point, I zip the tent back up and sit there listening for other noises. Nothing. Just the crickets and the breeze. I decide that there are a lot of strange noises in the woods, and I try not to let it bother me. Besides, I had my rifle. I start to doze off when I hear men's laughter off in the distance to my right, and then women's laughter and sticks snapping far off to my left. I'm up now, wondering if what I'm hearing is real or just a product of being half asleep. I hear more faint laughter from a couple other different directions. All different kinds of people, old men, old women, even children, and I confirm that yes, this is real. The noises are closing in, and I grab my rifle, preparing to fire off a warning shot in the air in case they came too close. Something about this laughter, how far in I was, the noise earlier and the time of night, told me that this was not just another family strolling through. I was on edge enough already, but then I noticed that the nightlife was dead quiet. Not even the wind was making any noise. I decided that enough was enough. I unzipped the tent and fired a shot into the night. I sat there and surveyed the tree line and saw nothing. I listened intensely to my surroundings. No laughing. The forest sounds had returned. Relaxing just a bit and figuring that I scared off whoever it was, I sat down in my exhausted state and I fell asleep. I woke up later in a cold sweat, racked with anxiety. It was still dark out. I immediately hear two people whispering not too far from my tent. Alert, I grab my rifle and listen to what they're saying. I can't make out much, but I hear something about being lost, so I shout, Hey, who's there? The voices fall silent. I shout again, Are you guys lost? Who's there? Suddenly a huge burst of flame, like a flamethrower, erupted from the middle of the clearing illuminating several silhouettes of people just standing around. In shock, I fire my rifle, blowing a hole in the front of my tent, and it goes dark. Without checking my surroundings, I got up and sprinted out of my tent, making a hard left back to where the trail was. I hiked until sunrise back to my truck, with my head over my shoulder the whole way. I never heard anybody follow me. I never saw anyone or anything the whole way but I still couldn't shake the feeling that I was being watched. After that, my enjoyment of camping alone left me, like I left all my gear in the woods that night. So my mom and I were camping in our sort of local national park in the Alps. I had a headache and had had a rough night, but nothing special. My mom, who thought that I had slept really well, really did not. The next morning she told me about the dreams she had had, and that they were really realistic and they kind of scared her. She thought she heard men 
talking outside of our tent in a foreign language and thought that we were going to be in trouble, being that we were two women alone in the middle of nowhere. Then she saw a woman walk slowly just next to our tent while looking in at us, kind of wearing a farm outfit. The next thing she saw was a whole lot of people dressed in white in the trenches just standing there. Back in the day, this national park was the site of a world war event. There are still remnants standing around. That particular night, I didn't see anything particular and I had no idea my mom was having such bad dreams. We thought it was maybe sleep paralysis, but the more we talk about it, it feels more like an encounter than a simple episode of sleep paralysis. Maybe they were just dreams, but she said it was nothing like any dream she'd ever had, that it was so vivid that she was sure it was real. We're okay, we're just wondering about the weirdness of it all, and we're curious if anything similar has happened to you. So about three years ago, I went camping with my now ex-girlfriend, as she had always expressed an interest but had never been. The spot we went to is in the Huron National Forest, and it's my go-to trail and camp spot. It's hidden deep in the forest, and the access to the trails is close and easy for ATVs, etc. My family has been going to this spot for about six years, and my friends that introduced me to it have been going for about ten years or so. We went for a weekend trip, and I'm glad we didn't go for any longer. When we got there, everything was going well, except we did notice a group of people that were hanging out next to the campsite, but they were just stargazing and they ended up leaving. Around midnight is when the weird stuff started to happen. At first, it sounded like somebody was laughing at us, but the laugh never ended. It got very high-pitched and sounded as it kept going. After a while, we both got kind of scared and went into the tent to try to sleep. And that's when the laugh noise moved up higher and started to circle the campsite. After a while of that happening, it just suddenly stopped. Then it started up again at about 3 a.m. When it started again, the fire was going out. So I went to stoke the fire with my shotgun in my hand and I turned on my flashlight to see if maybe I could see coyotes or something like that around the campsite. I didn't see anything or hear any movements. This went on until about 6 a.m. and then it stopped. That's when we were finally able to get some rest. After we woke up, we checked around the campsite, but we didn't see anything out of the ordinary, so we packed up. Once we were packed up and good to go, I went to start my vehicle and it was completely dead. That really freaked me out, as I am always paranoid about leaving things plugged in that kill the battery, and I made sure that everything was closed properly and unplugged the night before. Yet somehow, the battery still died. I was able to get a jump from AAA somehow. That phone call was hard to explain, and the lady who took the call didn't believe me, but at the end we both laughed. After that happened, I told my friend who had shown me the campsite and also had a cabin in the same forest about 25 miles away. When I told him what happened, he got freaked out. He told me about two incidents, which he's had, one at the campsite and one at his cabin. At the campsite, he stated that one night after we'd all returned from trail riding and went to bed, he stayed up to hang out by the fire and have a few drinks. While he was hanging out, he was just looking off into the distance and saw a pair of eyes up in the tree looking directly at him. He described them as bioluminescent. He flashed his high-powered flashlight up at them, but there was nothing there. And as soon as the flashlight turned off, there they were, looking right back at him. So he packed up and went right to bed. He didn't tell us because he didn't want to scare us. At the cabin, he was hanging out with his brother, and they were both just chilling by the fire outside, when they both saw a pair of eyes looking at them from a trail that leads into the woods. They stated that the height of the eyes that were looking at them meant that whatever it was had to be at least seven feet tall. They started shooting at it with their rifles, and the eyes had disappeared. But once they were done shooting, the eyes reappeared, this time closer. 
At that point, they were both freaked out and went back to the cabin, and they didn't leave until daylight. We have no idea what this could have been, but we all feel very scared. We especially felt fear at the time that the events were happening. After we all talked about it, one of the brothers thinks it might have been a Wendigo. I don't really know what it could have been, but I have never felt that scared before or since. I was nine years old and camping out with three families other than my own. I was sleeping in a small tent with one of my close friends when something woke me up. I listened and heard nothing from outside at first, so I opened the tent zipper enough to see the fire was out, so I knew the adults must be asleep. I closed the zipper and I laid back down. Shortly after I laid down, I heard a high-pitched voice from outside the tent. It kept saying, come out, come out and play with me. I would have thought that it was a person, but it was repeating itself over and over again and moving closer to the tent and then farther away, all the time circling. I opened the tent and looked out, but it was pitch black. At this point, I tried to wake the friend I was in the tent with, but he pushed me off. I tried again more violently this time and he woke up. I told him that I heard something outside, but he must not have been fully awake, because he just mumbled something and laid back down. After I talked to my friend, I tried to go to sleep, but the voice kept me up, always beckoning me to come out and play, always circling the tent. I don't know when exactly, or how, but somehow, I drifted off to sleep. The next morning I told my friend who had been in the tent about it, and he said that he remembered being annoyed. That I woke him up. So to me, that means that I wasn't dreaming. I'm certain that I was fully awake, so I doubt that I just hallucinated it. I know this didn't lead anywhere satisfactory, and I don't have any answers, but this is my true story about something that I can only assume is paranormal. This was when I was around 14, so about 2002. My cousin and I went camping behind my grandparents' house, about a half mile into the woods in northeastern Texas. We were just in our small tent, watching a movie on a portable DVD player. It was probably one in the morning, when suddenly something, or things, started rapidly running around our tent. Whatever it was kept pushing in at the top of the tent with their hands, and then running circles around the tent. It wasn't like they were trying to damage the tent, but like they were trying to scare us. We tried to rationalize what this could have been. It lasted about one or two minutes. We didn't hear any animal noises, but we did hear footsteps going around the tent. The height of the tent and the hands just made it seem like it was little kids doing it. We were scared shitless and made no noise the rest of the night. We went back home after sunrise. No children should have been out there. It wouldn't have been any of the family members. And it would just be a really odd thing to do if it was just random people. It's not really a place that people camp at either. If anyone can offer any thoughts on what this might be, I would really appreciate it. It's been a heavy weight on us and we've racked our brains to figure out what it could have been ever since. So I didn't realize this before yesterday, but I might have had a paranormal experience. I realized it because I was reading a story, and it was about a hunter who heard the voice of his brother calling for help in the middle of the woods when his brother was miles away. As I scrolled down the comments, I became familiar with some cultural stories about creatures that can lure us to basically our death by mimicking others. 
Last year, we went camping with some friends. It was early September, but still hot enough to sleep outside. We made ourselves a lovely camping spot with a big bonfire and some candles around it. I have some psychic abilities and can feel if a spirit is near or something. Usually I can feel if it's female or masculine or a child. Sometimes I thought I could feel something, but I didn't want to think too much about it or make a big deal out of it. I didn't want to get scared and fall into paranoia in the middle of the woods. The evening went fine and we stayed up until about 1 to 2 a.m. before going to bed. I woke an hour or two later in a full mode panic attack. I have a history with anxiety, but I've never felt this level of nausea before. It was like everything that I experienced before when I had my moments of high anxiety, but multiplied many times. I was sleeping with my boyfriend in the tent and he asked me if I was okay. I told him that I was feeling very bad and probably having a panic attack. I assumed it was because we were laying on the ground and it wasn't very comfortable and maybe that made me uneasy during my sleep. I sat up and started to do some breathing exercises to calm me down. It didn't really work, and I got out of the tent to throw up. After that, it kind of got better, and I was able to fall back asleep a little while later. The next morning, we all woke up and started packing up our stuff. I told the others about my story, and my boyfriend and one of his friends started talking about how they had heard footsteps around our camp during the night. I didn't think much of it since I didn't hear it, but according to my boyfriend, it happened just before I woke up, which is why he asked me if I was okay, because he was already up at the time, panicking. Anyway, fast forward to today. I never thought much about it, because I thought that this episode of panic was due to the fact that I had pushed my body a little too hard the day before. We went on this really long walk before camping. But now that I've read all these stories about creatures in the woods, and given that I have some abilities to sense these things, I wonder today if I woke up that night feeling an intense sense of danger. Tell me what you think, and if you've ever had those kind of experiences out in the woods. I had an interesting experience while camping with my husband. It was a nice drive in a campsite, a corner spot next to one other campsite and woods on the other three sides. We had a nice day hiking and cooked some fajitas and s'mores over the fire, and then we settled into our tent to sleep. Later that night, I woke up and heard a weird noise. It sounded like an electronic tone, kind of like a sine wave. Then I heard what sounded like people talking right outside the tent. They better get out of that tent. I saw a possum go in there. Thinking that there must be other campers walking around, I turned over and tried to go back to sleep. A couple of minutes later, I heard the strange tone again, and then what sounded like a cat meowing and walking around the tent. It sounded like my cat when he wants to be let in the house but I'm not about to let strange animals into my tent, so I just lay there and it stopped after about a minute. A couple of minutes later, I heard the tone again. Then I heard a lower, gravelly voice talking outside the tent. They better get out of there before I get them. All of this happened over the course of maybe 10 minutes. I didn't react as strongly as I probably should have, but I was tired and thought at first that it might be some kind of dream. My husband got up and left the tent to use the bathroom a little while later. He hadn't heard anything, and I didn't hear anything else after that. The next morning, while eating breakfast, I could hear the neighboring campers talking. One of their children, who was about five to seven years old, was upset with his brother because they'd heard somebody telling them to get out of the camper last night. His brother was denying that he had heard anything. I'm not sure exactly what happened that night, but it was very interesting to say the least. 